<clears throat> Here we go. Back. Game box daily. Mm -mm 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 -mm. <clears throat> Squiggle. Move my bum. Clench. There we go. Excellent. And we're jiggly. Jiggly. So jiggly. Welcome to Game box daily. I'm Dom. And I'm Zippy. Not that long ago, we were introduced to what was sure to be the greatest live service game of all time, Anthem. Of course, since its release in 2019, everyone is fully aware of how Anthem took the world by storm and almost instantly became the number one game in the world, except that didn't happen at all. In fact, Anthem was practically dead on arrival. The game started its development in 2012 and was initially teased in 2014, but was plagued with development woes throughout its development. When it was released in 2019, it was buggy and broken. Many people looked at it as the new, and somehow worse, No Man's Sky in terms of failed promises. However, all was not lost for Anthem. Many reviewers said that it appeared to have some good bones that could be built upon. The team over at Bioware agreed, and they said they were going to continue working and improving upon the game. There were plans for releasing additional content to build the game up past the initial 30 hours. The first release was Cataclysms, and it was supposed to have another release a few weeks later. However, that never happened. Staff at Bioware pushed a blog post stating that a substantive revision was coming, similar to how Square Enix revised Final Fantasy XIV. This was in February of 2020. There was a team of roughly 30 personnel who went to focus on Anthem and reinventing the core gameplay loop while preserving the fun of flying around in the fancy space shooter. As of May 2020, the team was still working on these fixes. Sadly, that work is now over. Just last week, EA and Bioware announced that there were no further updates to Anthem, nor would the newer, improved Anthem, dubbed Anthem Next, be happening. Bioware stated that Anthem as it currently exists will continue to be supported. However, the extent of that support will likely remain as leaving the servers on for now, as the official statement was they will, quote, continue to keep the Anthem live service running as it exists today. That continuation of the service provided is no guarantee. There are many who have complained of matchmaking issues, and those are sure to get worse. However, there's been a small infusion of players, with physical copies going relatively cheap. This similarly occurred with Gearbox Clash Shooter Battleborn. Battleborn was more or less abandoned after the poor response in 2016, but the service remained online until this year. While Anthem did not change the world, it certainly shone a light on the workings of Bioware and EA. Bioware has been very public about how they're shifting more and more focus to Dragon Age, and Anthem just doesn't fit in that balance anymore. The statement included comments on how this was a difficult decision to cut the cord on Anthem next, but I doubt it was really that difficult when it comes to a proven series like Dragon Age versus a game that was dead in the water like Anthem, Space Magic Shooter is the easy target. So. Probably the most interesting thing about all of this, uh, when I was doing my research on it, was the fact that uh, the Bloodborne servers went dead this year, five years after the, the game was released. I was so big on the, the Battleborn uh, train. Like, I was not the Overwatch kid. I was all about the Battleborn game, and, and Battleborn was dead in the water. Um, but, uh, I mean, it's if you look at that and how at that time it seemed like gearbox was trying to ape uh blizzard with battleborn versus overwatch this was just kind of that ish um fantasy space shooter with jetpacks was just destiny with jetpacks i'm uh, I so I never got to play Anthem, um, and I kind of like, but I did love the the look of it. I mean, there was a lot of Iron Man references going around from like the various different types of mecha. Um, like you had the big, like chunky one that looked like the Hulkbuster. I just, it's it's a real shame. I think from the streams I watched, it had this beautiful, rich depth to it, and it looked phenomenal and an absolutely you know amazing experience it kind of reminds me of kind of like eve it's like when i'm looking on the outside of it i'm like oh my god this is so good why am i not playing it and then i play it and i'm just like why am i not ripping my eyes out of my head right now <laughs> it's, just like, it's, it's like so boring um and it's it's a shame there's almost like i i think with these like games as a service there's there's all it's very highlanderish um and we've seen uh you know very uh, you know ex um, examples of that throughout the last year um, especially in the Battle Royale kind of uh, space. Um, you saw Ubisoft try to release their own version and that got killed off. Um, and this, the, you know, the, the this is just another example of like, if you don't... 
I wouldn't even say if you don't like, you know, put some effort in. I just feel like there was no effort into this. Like there, there was, there, there was a huge, like it's like, hey guys, I'm gonna give you a Ferrari, but um, just warn you, uh, there's no engine in it. By the way, <laughs> I have here's a nine volt battery, it's a nine volt motor running this beautiful Ferrari, and it's like, dumb. It's such a beautiful car, and I can't do shit with it. It's <laughs> Yeah, and that's that's like one of the issues that I have with all of this stuff too is like they they're giving you maybe half a game at most um and and like I mentioned the 30 hour mark uh, uh, that was the point where most of what player base they did have just stopped whether it was they were there for the looty shooty bits because they actually enjoyed the looty shooty bits or they were there for the story bits because they actually enjoyed the story bits which Really weird, fun fact, ne'er the twain did those meet. You were either there for the story and slugged through the looty shooty bits because you hated him, but you really liked the story, or you were there for the looting and the shooting and just skipped every cutscene because you found the story to be awful. Two opposite ends and they never met in between, but they all crossed the board, stopped to 30 hours. So that was like supposed to be the more. We're giving you a live service. Uh, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll release the constant update so that we can keep you in past that 30 hour mark. And they did one. They did one. Yeah. I, I, say, I think this is, you know, it's going to go the, the same way the mammoths did into the graveyard. Uh, or way of the dodo, as it were. And it's unfortunate. Um, I think this game had a lot of potential. I know there are some individuals saying that they predicted it was going to fail from the start, but Bioware are a, friend, uh, you know, a team that uh, have a fantastic track record um, and can produce some amazing story-driven content. Um, I certainly think uh, there is room in the market for more dark Destiny-esque style games, um, especially in that kind of like Mecha-esque cyber world. You've got, oh, what, I mean, you've got Warframe, you've got Destiny, um, you know, and this this had a really novel mechanic with it as well. So, <sighs> rest in peace, uh, Anthem. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe Squenix will will make us remember what you were supposed to be with with Outriders, but that one doesn't have mech suits. No, it doesn't. It's got a dodge roll. It does have a dodge roll, and, and it has chest high walls. It has so many chest high walls. Chest high walls. Do you time. like chest high walls? I like chest high walls. Yeah. I wish there was a goddamn dodge rail. <laughs> anyway, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>